Hello and welcome to NTV Wild Talk with me, Smriti Vidyarthi. Today we're coming to you from the base of the magnificent Mount Kilimanjaro here in the Amboseli National Park in the county of Kajiado. And this episode has been made possible thanks to the Altakai Lodge that's accommodating us. Now in the background you can't quite see the mountain because it is overcast, but what we can see is a magnificent herd of elephants and they are why we're here. The Amboseli National Park is home to a variety of animals, from lions to grazers to the hippopotamus. But it is best known for its herds of elephant, magnificent in both character and numbers. The families and individuals, all named, roam the land with the impressive Mount Kilimanjaro towering in the backdrop. The African elephant is a complex yet fascinating species, and much of what we know today about it is based on studies by the Amboseli Trust for Elephants. Nestled amongst the palms is the Elephant Research Camp, which is pretty much home to founder Cynthia Moss, research assistants Noran Jiraini and Katito Sayalel, and resident scientist Vicky Fishlock. Started in 1972, Cynthia and a colleague wanted to study individual elephants and gather baseline data on the biology of a natural population. They identified the various families based on their appearance and named them using the alphabet. And today, research assistants Nora and Katito know the names of every single elephant in the whole of Amboseli and everything about them. I headed out on a safari with them to learn all about the magical Amboseli elephants. We are now in the middle of the Amboseli National Park. The sun is shining. We are surrounded by a beautiful herd of elephants and Mount Kilimanjaro has peeped out of the clouds saying hello. So it really is a perfect morning. Now we do have to be a little bit careful because these elephants, of course, don't like very much noise. Um, Katito and Nora, you are experts. You are assistant researchers and have been doing this for years. Tell us first, who is this family? Okay, here we have fragments of AA family and closest to us is, a -A is Anne. This is Anne this behind Anne us? behind us. Wow. And yeah, they, they are, she is coming to say hello to us because she, they know the, our vehicle so well and they know us, our smell, our voices. So you say this is the AA family. AA family. Explain that to us. How do we know this is the AA and what does that mean? Uh, we have 53 family units in Amboseli population. So we have families from AA family. And when talking about AA family, we have uh, all of them, they have names studied by A, letter A. Okay. You know, that's why we have here, we have Anne, we have Amelia, we have Anne An Harred and we have um, Alfie. So uh, it's not all the members of the families here. We have the matriarch of AA's family. The leader of AA family is Amelia. She is there in front of there, leading the family. As you can see them, they are just eating slowly, heading to the swamp. And I'm double sure they are talking to the, the member of the family. Really? Yeah, they do calling them, know where we are, we are here. Oh, wow. And Amelia has the Linda, is the one who's just uh, telling everybody what's happening. Oh, wow, that really is amazing. They are communicating. Mm -hmm. uh, Katito, do elephants often spend time in family circles? Because uh, as Nora said, this is one family unit. Yeah, they do spend time all together. 
especially the females. Because when a male reached 14 to 15 years, he leave the family and join a bachelor group of males. <laughs> uh, some, that's why you see one male by himself or two males by themselves. Right. But families, sisters, cousins, and they stay together until the rest of their life. Wow, so that is real sisterhood and girl power. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So in case if you find a under, maybe you find a male here because it's young male, maybe under 10, under 15 years. Yeah. yeah. They, they really are just so magnificent to watch and you spend a lot of your time, both of you, throughout the day watching these elephants. Um, Nora, what is it that's so special about elephants for you? They are my friend. That's the <laughs> first part, <Yeah. laughs> to say they are special. And elephants, they have their personalities. And I can see elephants, they are just like human beings, their behavior. And uh, I stay with elephants about that, I, uh, that yes, uh, with them. So I know them so well, their behavior. They are very intelligent animals, right. very proud animals. Uh, they hate noises. And after staying with them for a long time, they, we know how they like and what they dislike, their likes. So we try so much to make them to be happy. First of all, they hate so much being approached from the back. And uh, we approach them by uh, just uh, approaching them, driving in front of them, and let them come to us and switch off the engine. Otherwise, when harassing them, they never forget. Elephants, they have very good memories. Really, wow. So that's saying an elephant never forgets mm -hmm. really is true. They don't very forget. True. Never forget. You know, Katito, you have also spent years studying elephants. What is it that's remarkable about them for you? I remember when I started doing this project, mm -hmm. I had a very sharp voice and I was so excited <laughs> when I was looking at them. Yeah. So then I talk loud and then you see them, they all disappear and go and say, oh my God, what did I do, something wrong? Yeah. And then you see them, they again, all the time I've been like talking. I never gave up to talk because I love and I love the job I'm doing. All the time I keep on talking, talking, so they get used to they get used to my voice. Sure. Yeah, or whatever I shout now, they don't even run away. <laughs> yeah. But you see, they were as we are shouting and talking. Yes. Somebody else they could be just like you see, ears up, yes. looking, yeah. and just <laughs> scary and know that way. So, yeah, they, and also they have their own personality. I can imagine, just like human beings, but um, some people argue that perhaps elephants are actually better than human beings. They're more friendly and um, more, more polite and more respectable. Yeah, they are, they are, so, yeah, it is very true because you see elephants, like you see, for example, let me give you an example of a human being. You have your child yeah. and you've been seeing how people treating their child. Her mother can even beat her daughter yeah. to death. An elephant cannot. Elephants, they are better than us. Wow. I'm sorry to say this because I'm a human being, <laughs> yes. but the way totally you see, they just protect. I have a female uh, myself. I saw her, Nora, she was in Nairobi. She gave birth because they start to come in estrus when they are nine years. Mm -hmm. And then they give birth. They change the period of carrying the baby in the stomach two years. She gave birth. All, for bad luck, she was, scared, she was called Kitty. Uh -huh. For bad luck, the family left and she didn't have an experience how she can handle the calf okay. so she was there and then the baby was okay because when i found her the baby was like three hours old mm -hmm. just very new baby wow. and for bad luck she didn't have an experience what to do so she put the baby into the water and the time she was trying to get the baby, grabbing the baby from the water, she didn't know what to do. So what she was doing, just all, she was trying all her best to get out of the baby, because the baby was uh, suffocating in yeah. the water. So first of all, she was sitting on the baby because <gasps> she didn't have an experience, because normally what they have to do, they have to have the, the grandmother and the rest of the family to help her yes. to how to trick the baby. Yeah. So, and what he did, I called the KWS and to help us mm -hmm. to come and try to chase her away so we can get into the river and get the baby out. out. She didn't let us. She was seriously charging us. Really? So you see, she didn't, because she was thinking us, we are taking our baby away. So we managed, we chased her with bullets to scare her. Gosh. And then finally we managed to get the baby out. 
that that motherly love really really is something and we can actually see in the distance that there is a little baby yeah, there <laughs> as well oh, yeah resting beautiful. resting in the bushes but you know you talked about um of course how elephants are emotional let's talk about their intelligence as well they are very very smart elephants like you said nora they will never forget but tell us more about really how intelligent these guys are Somewhere they're being poached. They can remember that their enemies is human being by shooting them, using the car, using the gun. So like that's why in Amboseli they don't know about being poached. So other parts like in Savo, when approaching an elephant, you approach an elephant is to take take it will just take off. The enemies they know in Amboseli are a little bit, but they are earlier before. Mm -hmm. They they were not a friend with the community. Because we were using their area, the community, were, they, they were just uh, getting mad and just uh, speared them. Yeah, human elephant or conflict. Before, exactly, before we, we had that problem. So Amboseli um, elephants, they can remember their enemies as Maasai, the men, when they hear the men voices. So they know they are the ones who were spearing them. Because what the Maasai were doing, they were just uh, smear them with, with ochre. Yeah. And when spearing them, they, they, they were, when they're talking, they can hear those men voices. So that's why we can say that sometimes they don't like men voices. Wow. But nowadays it's okay, no problem. We don't have that problem anymore. Well, I'm just looking at their activity now. What exactly are they doing? Feeding, like now, okay, they do elephants, they eat everything. <laughs> really? Everything? Yeah, they eat everything, they eat everything. And now, now what happened there, that's with that cat to Anne. Anne and her, okay, this is Anne, Anne and, her, and, her, and, her, and her daughter and her granddaughter. granddaughter. So her granddaughter is a little baby that's right now sleeping. Yeah, that is her first yeah. baby. Yeah. So she doesn't, she, ha she has to take care of her and she doesn't have to, he has to not to leave her. Mm -hmm. And what yeah. they are doing, like you see, the way they are feeding, yeah. they're kicking grass. Yes. And Move the dust, mm -hmm. yeah, so that they can feed. Yeah, oh. yeah. and the matriarch <laughs> cannot leave them. The matriarch, she's ahead of them, her father, father mm -hmm. eh? Amelia. Mm -hmm. So she has to wait, and and if she really ready to move, mm -hmm. that this is what we call contact call and contact answer. She has to rumble, and then you all listen to her and go. It is like a traffic. It is like a traffic jam in Nairobi. You see, when the light stop, yes. they all, even them they all stop okay. and they wait, and they, they have and to listen to her. Oh yeah. And yeah. elephants, they have very good hearing. Really? Well, they have they huge have ears. very good <laughs> hearing. Uh, anyway, the ears is just when they're flapping ear like that is cooling their body. That's why they're yeah. so... They yeah. have ears like us. You see the hole? Oh, You really? see where the ear is? is? There's yes. a hole in, for, in front of the big So the actually, big where they hear from, it's just the same size as our ears. Exactly. Yeah. They have very poor sight. Really? And good smell. Yeah, so the, most of the time they don't use the sight because it's very poor. They use the hearing and the smearing. Well, I do often sometimes see elephants lifting up their trunk, you know, and putting it that towards it. someone and that's yeah. because they're smelling. Because yeah. they can't see far, so they use the smelling and hearing. It's very good. And now how you see the calf is lying down. Yeah. They, they don't have they to wake the calf, they mm -hmm. have to wait for the calf to. Yeah. When the red is ready, the calf <laughs> to move. And also, wow. a, a young calf like this, when the mother gives birth, yeah. there's this wall we call a low mothers. Mm -hmm. They take care of the calf. And what the calf, the calf do, just go and suckle to the mother yeah. and back. Like what we normally say, we hire house girl to take care of the baby yes. when you go to work. Yeah. They have to wait for the calf. But if they really want to go, what they do, they just go and touch the baby a little bit. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Wake up, please. <laughs> and, and sometimes, <laughs> What they do, they kick. No, I don't okay. want. And we really? see like, just do that. Like the cub, the, the human baby calf yeah. doesn't want to get up. Oh. Just do like this. So Mom, even see that, <laughs> just put their trunk like this. Oh, yeah, so oh, that's they don't. just like any human being. I mean, a mother wouldn't wake up her baby from its No, no, no. Yeah, yeah just, yeah, wait. Wait, have, wait to enough, sleep. Enough rest. Yeah. And how yeah. old is that little baby, do you think? Uh, three months. Three months. It's how three months. How can you tell that? The ears are pinkish. So you can say that is like um, less than a week. Oh. And also, you know, they have amplical cord, like a human being oh, yes. baby, uh, the amplical cord go yeah. away after seven days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also you look how if the calf is still wobbly, you can estimate the, the age, okay. even the days. And yeah. what about with uh, bigger elephants that have perhaps um, become adolescents or much older? How can you gauge their age? You look at the size of the body and also the size of the task. 
male they have overhead mm -hmm. and the female they have like box head okay. so you see the part of the female like they circle like the way also mm. has as when we start aging when yes. you get old yes. you see this part of the it face just sink, sink in yes. even the elephant they are like that so you, you mm -hmm. use a lot of things and also like, you can say an elephant can have eight cups lifespan yeah, eight, eight to nine, nine. Eight oh, to for nine. her lifespan mm -hmm. so you see for the female you see the body start to suck and the belly hang down so Just you have like to look woman. like for example you're like human beings so if you look at her she's still young yes. and also the back length yeah. you see is not suck in mm -hmm. it's still straight so others you look like a little really bent so that how and also you use the size of the task and the circumference of the task okay yeah gosh so that's how you can tell and Nora, you know, as we watch these elephants feed on the grass, they're using their trunks. What else do they use their trunks for? Uh, drinking. Mm -hmm. They use their trunk by drinking. Oh, uh, the baby's Yeah, it's up now. now. <laughs> the baby's up. Oh, and what's the baby's name, did you say? Did, did, does it we, we, we do name them after three years, so oh. that we make sure they are going to survive instead oh. of uh, misusing the names. Okay, yeah. I get it. Yeah. Oh, well, they are walking away now, but before we perhaps try and follow them, uh, you were mentioning what else they use their trunks for, of course, drinking. Drinking and eating, okay. feed, feeding, they use the trunk because they cut the whatever, maybe bra brushes, brushes or uh, the grass yes. and put in the mouth. And of course, it and must a lot be of very, people, a lot of people strong. they think that very strong by them is very strong. Can you imagine drinking? I think one just when pulling, just pulling the water is about f five liters. Really? And put in the mouth. Oh my! Yeah. Oh wow! <laughs> so anyway, a lot of people that when they don't know elephants, they think they use their trunk to feed, or like the calf yeah. when they are suckling, mm -hmm. they they think they use their trunk, okay. but they use the mouth. Well, they are sort of getting out of our sight now, so I think we will actually see if we, can, if we can follow them. But really just watching these magnificent creatures here in the Amboseli, it's been incredible. Um, where are they moving to, perhaps? They're heading to the swamp. The swamp. Now they'll be in the swamp feeding and drinking in the swamp, in the okay. marsh here. Yeah. That's where now we're where they're heading. Uh, did you realize that behavior? They waited until the calf get up. when they move on. Yeah, and, and, the, and now you see the mid truck was waiting. They, the mid truck was waiting, and they waited, and the calf get up. Now they said, now let's go. And now they have this communication, as Katito said, they have the, that's how they communicate. And a lot of people think it's their belly making that noise. Mm -hmm. It's communication, the rumble, they mm -hmm. And they are different, and they know so well. They know, they are same, they know what they communicate. When calling, when, uh, discuss, when making a decision, the meter have to make a decision. We also have a contact call. How do you do fish contact call and contact answer? When there's no food, they split in small group. So you see, the, the, because they, f they have very good hearing, there are those sound below our hearing, the one we can get it from the machine, mm -hmm. and those uh, our be below our hearing sound, they go far, than the one we can hear. Wow. They can move far, far distance, even 15 kilometers, and they can hear it so well. So contact answer, you see the member of the family will, contact, will call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm one of the members of the family, and you see, she is at the head and put the ears out and listen, and swing both sides and listen. And the other member of the family will answer and just mm, soft one and continue to whatever she was doing. And at the end of the day, they'll come together. And that's the place I love so much. Yeah. I, I get like, I, <laughs> sometimes I even shed tears when I see this. The love they have, the elephants. They come together with slumbling and spinning around, defecating, urinating with head eye. Really? And that the time we see, there's a glad of the elephants between the ear and the eye, and they got that secretion. Yeah. So the female, they got the secretion when they are excited, when they are sad. So that's the time they have the secretion. And you see now, all of them, they have the secretion because they're excited. Oh. It's like the way you have not seen your sister for many, many yes. years. When you come it's together. Happy tears. <laughs> tears of joy. Yes. They do that. That is true. And they love. do that when they're related. When, when, when they're related, they do that. But they're not related, they just come. Yeah. <laughs>
Elephants, I see you say that, uh, they are like people, they are those boring. Mm. When they come together, they are like, hmm, where <laughs> yeah. have you been? Where, what have you been? But they are those ones, they like each other so much. Yeah. Like, they are those ones, we, talk, we, we just talk about them, they are talkative. Right. When they come together, they scream and <laughs> well, get certainly, happy, get so excited. Certainly, as human yeah. beings, we need exactly. to be more like elephants. Yeah. Exactly, we need they to are spread. like human beings. We need to spread the love. Do you All know, right. even a female, when a cow being treated, Sometimes the, the females have to be dotted so that you get the, to the baby. Oh. You can't get the baby of an elephant. Gosh. Yeah, even if we're being treated, oh. if there's a problem. Fantastic. Yeah, well, really I think we do need to follow them yeah, and just um, yeah, yeah, get a sense of what they're doing now. But of course, um, this is NTV Wild Talk. We are taking a breather. Remember, this show has been made possible thanks to the Altakai Lodge that's accommodating us. We are in the wonderful Amboseli National Park. We're taking a break, but first, here's our wild guest question. How do you estimate the age of a living elephant? How do you estimate the age of a living elephant? Use the hashtag NTV Wild on Twitter or like our NTV Wild Facebook page and post your answer on the timeline. Private messages won't be considered. The first person to answer correctly wins two nights for two at the lovely self-catering Kibo Guest House overlooking Mount Kilimanjaro, plus free entry for two people and one vehicle into the spectacular Amboseli National Park. The winner also gets one bottle of wine courtesy of Wines of the World and a gift hamper courtesy of Wildlife Direct. Terms and conditions apply. Last week's lucky winner was Sophie Ndungi. Welcome back to NTV Wild Talk with me, Smriti Vidyarthi, coming to you from the Amboseli National Park. Here's a reminder of our wild guest question. How do you estimate the age of a living elephant? How do you estimate the age of a living elephant? Use the hashtag NTV Wild on Twitter or like our NTV Wild Facebook page and post your answer on the timeline. Private messages won't be considered. The first person to answer correctly wins two nights for two at the lovely self-catering Kibo Guest House overlooking Mount Kilimanjaro, plus free entry for two people and one vehicle into the spectacular Amboseli National Park. The winner also gets one bottle of wine courtesy of Wines of the World and a gift hamper courtesy of Wildlife Direct. Terms and conditions apply. Last week's lucky winner was Sophie Ndungi. So we've actually made it to the swamp before this AA family herd of elephants. It has taken them a bit of time to get here, no doubt. I mean, as I said, they are huge creatures. Katito, how much do these guys weigh? I, an adult bull weighs seven tons. Wow. And a female weighs six tons. And yeah, so you see, and also you cannot even hear how they move and how big they are. Even I if they are running, you cannot even it like they walk smoothly it's so running. incredible yeah. because yeah. they're huge but you cannot even hear their footsteps even when we were listening earlier there was just silence it was incredible and what about the little guys they're so adorable how much do the babies weigh okay when they are born born with 90 kilos or 100 kilos it depends on the size of like how like when because uh it's huge I it's a, a t the baby is three months old yeah. And like against the baby now weigh like how many kilos? 250? Yeah. 250. Oh 250. my. And the human being weigh? <laughs> 75, 100? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Oh my. Mm -hmm. And you know, now that they're a little bit closer, I can see their skin. It really does look very rough and gray and tough as well. But in fact, um, elephant skin is quite sensitive. We've seen at the David Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust that they put blankets on the baby elephants and even sun cream on their ears because they can get sunburned. Even even you touch them because we've been rescued baby taken yes. to the orphanage. Yes. Yeah. So when you touch it, they are, they are, they are very rough and herring too. 
Oh, wow. But yeah. of course, um, still sensitive skin, which is interesting because it does certainly look so rough and tough. Yeah. So, yeah. Nora, now the elephants are getting to the swamp and they're about to drink. How far do they walk throughout the day? Because we saw them when they were resting far away, meters away, and now they've come here and no doubt later they will progress. They do move about even over 15 kilometers. Uh huh. But th th now I'm talking about families. They, okay. do, they don't go far, not like males. The males, they do go far, but females, they don't go far because of the young ones. Uh -huh. They can't go in a distance. So they go about 15 to 20 kilometers. Uh, and simply because to go and get different food, different kind of food. Yeah. Because elephants eat everything. So they eat different uh, vegetation outside the park. And when they come in, they walk in the swamp so that they have grass in the swamp, in soft trees in the, in the swamp, and also drinking. You know, elephants are, are also crucial to the ecosystem and to the landscapes and biodiversity as well. Their tusks are crucial. Uh, of course, we know that elephants are hugely threatened because of their tusks. Poachers are after them. We know that they are sort of the teeth of the elephant. Uh, Katito, how important are they? First of all, the calves start to have tusks when they are two. You start to see like small toothpick coming mm -hmm. out <laughs> when they are two, two, two years and a half. Mm -hmm. That's the time you see. And also use a lot for a lot of stuff. Like they use for like when a female give birth, you know the calf will cover with a the sack. They use the tusk for removing and open the calf. Really, like yeah, the so amniotic the, sack? Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's how they wow, do. And done. also they use also tusk for digging. Uh -huh. And also male, they use the task of for like when the male the male is in mass sexually active, mm -hmm. they use the task and also push the tree, knock the tree down wow. to attract the female to come and feed, if it's a female in mistress. So they use they have a lot of things for using the task too. And of course their tusks therefore are so critical to them, yeah. but these animals are butchered yeah. and killed for those tusks. You know. I love elephants, clearly you do too, and so many other people do, but there are a lot of people that perhaps don't understand why they should fall in love with elephants. They are very, very uh, critical species, but at the same time, many communities, especially here in Kajiado, face the problem of human wildlife conflict. So, Nora, how do you convert somebody's vision of an elephant when they have perhaps lost a family member because of human wildlife conflict? How can you make a community member love an elephant the same way you do? Uh, first of all, uh, how to make them to love the elephants just to educate them and let them know the importance of the elephants. Let them know elephants they need their lives as, as we do by uh, educating them the behavior of the elephants, that's the first thing to make them love the elephants. Because a lot of people, they just look at the elephants, it's just animals, just elephants. But after, as soon as you understand their, their behavior, you'll have that love and understand they are just like human beings. They just need their life the way we need our life. Are elephants um, important to the Maasai community? Do they have some sort of cultural belief about elephants? Is there a connection? First of all, they believe to kill an elephant will be bad luck. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. They believe that. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they, they know elephants, they are something to them. And as we said, just like, the, like people, they know that so well. You see, even Maasai, when uh, they f just walking on their way, maybe hard, uh, they find a carcass, uh, the, 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 the skull. Yes. They just put the grass. That's the for good luck. So not only are elephants important, you know, for many different reasons, economic value, of course, because they bring in tourists, um, which of course boosts the economy, but for cultural reasons and also uh, biodiversity, as as we discussed. Um, you know, when we talk about elephants and their their social behaviour. Uh, Let's talk about the threats. What are the biggest threats, other than poachers, of course, to elephants? Katito. What the threat they have when a calf be attacked, when the female give birth, and the hyenas trying to attack them. So we have few elephants, they have short tail. Because they, when the oh. hyenas trying to attack, they get the tail. But not, not quite a lot because, you know, they all, all, all the time when they give birth, they are there. But what I saw 
uh, only uh, during the drought season in 2009, uh, that time we had a terrible drought, not only elephant, a lot of species of yeah. animals. Uh, we saw one calf was like about seven years old, but the mother was dead. Oh. So the lions were are trying to attack them. Mm -hmm. and they got like five lions, they got attacked them, but the family were not there. Mm -hmm. So I can, what from my experience, what I know, they don't have big challenges, no, okay. no threat for them, yeah. These elephants are really, really fabulous and exciting to watch. And earlier, we talked about how they celebrate each other and they celebrate life and they celebrate families coming together. But they also mourn, don't they? Elephants also mourn the loss of their loved ones. What they do when they find the, ca the, the carcass, first of all, they just throw the bones, take the bones and throw them away, just throw them. Really? And when doing that is something very serious. It's, they don't do that for fun. And they go to the skull and start turning the skull, smelling, and see them just with the hair lowly and ears like the forward. Yeah. And just, you can tell they are mourning and you see them just lying there with the trunk leg uh, down and having the table, the, the table grad secretion I was talking about. Yes, and that of course represents joy but also sadness, the as sadness, you said. The sadness. But now the difference of the secretion of the mast male and the female, uh, for the females, when it gets dry, few hours. Okay. When they have it, when they're excited, so it get dry mm -hmm. in a few hours. But for the mass male, will stay there until he finishes the mass. Oh. If it is three months. You know, now I can see the elephants are entering into the swamp, mm -hmm. and it's beautiful to watch. How is the baby going to manage? Because I'm a little concerned. Yeah. Well, okay. The the calf will follow the mother, mm -hmm. and will be just swimming. Because oh, really? now, yeah, because mm. the, this swamp is so deep. So they go to the marsh and, and uh, the mother will be just feeding the marsh and the calf will be there behind the mother and the mother will be making sure with the tail and oh. the calf is there. Oh, wow. The calf is not be there. And this uh, herd, of course, has no males in it, Katito, except perhaps the babies may be males. Um, you mentioned earlier that the males uh, leave the herd when they're adolescents. Do they ever come back and are they, do they just lead a solitary life? They do join, fit with them for a while and then go. And also we have the young male under, under 15 years. Like we have like the young one is a male. Mm -hmm. And also they do, they join even and when they're in mass uh, and if there is a, a female in this race, means sexually active. You see a lot of male in that family and there is one male guide the female and also we have this one we call the scavengers just <laughs> just try to mate and yeah. run away but yeah. normally the female prefer to be guided with a, um, a full proper mass male because this one they just scavengers just mating so they join uh. fit for a while and live and also there's with what we call mama's boy there was a <laughs> male was called steward from sb S, sb family uh, yeah he left the family when he was 18 years he didn't want to leave the family mm -hmm. and also because as nora said the female don't don't travel far away because of the young ones yeah. and they know where to go and look for food because of they normally like to protect the calf. Mm -hmm. That man, he didn't want to leave the family. So what happened, what they did, normally as the mother, the mother didn't want to chase his son away, but the members of the family and cousin, <laughs> they decided to chase him away. Oh no. Yeah, so he didn't want to, but he has to oh. go. And also the other thing is, as I say, this young one, we have what we call a low mother, take care of the calves. Mm -hmm. Male, you know how male are naughty. They don't, they don't know <laughs> yes. how to take, take care of the calves. Mm -hmm. So they just kick. So when oh. when reach that time, they start to, no, you're not supposed to do that. Yeah. And also the, the young female, they try to pr protect. So it reach at a certain time, they don't want to live, but they have to live. Oh. They have to be chased away. The males, they never stop growing. They keep oh, growing really? The of their life. And the, the females, they, when they reach the age of 55 years, they stop growing. Okay. And what is the, the lifespan of, of an elephant? Uh, 65 to 70. So again, you know, similar to human beings. Yeah. And by the way, elephants, they do die because of the teeth. They have the last set of the teeth and they die because of sufficient because yeah. they don't eat everything when they have the last set of the teeth. So if elephants, they do have dentists, mm. they could live longer. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Watching these elephants head into the swamp, as I keep saying, it is a beautiful sight and they are getting deeper and deeper in there. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Katito, 
When you hear about incidents of poaching around the country, perhaps not in Amboseli, how does it make you feel? I feel terrible. Yeah. Sometimes even uh, you see like you find, uh, you, f you, f you see something like that, oh, he here, you feel like, why do you have to, why do they have to kill? Just because of ivory? And in Amboseli is, is, is much better because when uh, an elephant we, because we do we do the census every day right. so we know everybody is make sure everybody is, is there, here is here so if we do a census because we do a census every day if i miss one of the members of the family as i say female sisters cousin and they stay together mm -hmm. until the rest of their life if i miss a day maybe she was in stress because sometimes they go in stress and but they have to come back in the later because right. sometimes the male chase them away uh and then we have to report and just say for Keda Bliss, we are missing this female. Like okay. we had a female who was called Jemima. She was my favorite from the J Bay's family. Yeah. Uh, she had an albino. Oh, okay. And we had three mm. albino. Really? Very interesting. And both of them, they were males. Mm -hmm. And that female, all the time she was with the family, all the time she was called Jemima. And then I did the census. Second day, three days, oh no, she's not there. I had to report. And so she was poisoned. <gasps> she was poisoned. Uh, but lucky, they would poison her. They were trying to attack her, but she got poisoned to take the task. But lucky, I reported immediately to KWS. In KWS, they said, do you know, because as we know where the home ranges for the elephant, mm. yeah. I said, that elephant come from uh, mm, east side. Yeah. So you can get, you know, the, where mm -hmm. we can get. And then they went, they found her and dead. And so sad, two calves were there. Gosh. A young one, the albino one was just there and lucky they took the task. So it is so sad when you feel like somebody tried to spear an elephant mm. or put the elephant to take ivory. Yeah. 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 And also it's so good because you know when an elephant broke its task, margin grow again. Mm. Yeah. So they continue to grow slowly by slowly. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like no, that is not not good. Sometimes you see like I found an elephant die, I tear, I cry mm. and people think like this woman <laughs> are you sure? Are you, are you <laughs> crying for a human being? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is like you, it is like for me, I lost a member of my family. Mm. I feel the same thing I feel to these elephants. Yeah. yeah. Nora, what are some of your fondest memories in the last 30 years uh, that, you've, that you've worked? What are some of the, the crazy experiences that you've had with these elephants? And in fact, I had one boyfriend, Ian. Yeah. An elephant, <laughs> and he was killed in Tanzania. Oh, in, no. In 1994. They went in Tanzania and there was a hunting block in oh Tanzania, gosh. in the Gido area. And we lost nine males, big over 50 years. Really? So when I joined the project, my favorite, all, all of us, we have favorite elephants. So my favorite elephants, when I joined the elephants, uh, the project was Ian. Oh. And by the way, I named him after my son. Oh, I how nice. So in love with him. Oh, and wow. Was, so Ian was so, <laughs> I don't know what to say, he was so good at behaving like mass male aggressive just uh, fighting with other males and you know even when they're in mass they have walking style yes <laughs> so Ian was having all this behavior right so anyway i was so sad when he was killed in tanzania yeah. clearly you still love ian and you still yeah. love jemima and and all oh, the rest yeah. as well yeah. all right ladies thank you so much um there's still so much more to discuss um, yeah. and just remember that in part two of this show which is next week we're going to find out a lot more about these ladies they've told us all about the elephants but how did nora get involved in this research project and also katito as well they have some fascinating stories so do be sure to catch part two of this conversation next week ladies thank you so much and we look forward to hearing You're more welcome. from you this is ntv wild talk it is now time to shift focus here are some of the photos that you shared with us on our wild pick segment this is a photo of Noreen Mutoro taken at the Mount Kenya Wildlife Conservancy orphanage in Nanyuki. She was feeding a dick dick called Moto some acacia leaves and peanuts after her mother was killed in a fire in a nearby conservancy. Noreen was an intern at the orphanage. In the Maasai Mara, this is Anthony Kamakia. He was holding up an elephant thigh bone and says that he wants to appeal to Kenyans to visit this magical place that is the Mara. Anthony Mwangi snapped this shot at the Hell's Gate in Naivasha. He was just taking a selfie and says he was enjoying nature and appreciating how great Kenya is. 
This is Kevin Chetambe and his tourism student Veronica Mathenge. They were in Lake Naivasha posing by the lake and they say they were just visiting to see the hippos because of their great love for nature. And then there's Francis Cargo at the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. He was leading an orphaned elephant and interacting with it and says he was a volunteer intern and says that elephants are the best animals. Well, if you want your photo showcased on our Wild Pick segment, just like our NTV Wild Facebook page and send your photo celebrating nature via private message. Include your full name, tell us where the photo was taken, what you were doing and why. You can also post your photo on Twitter using the hashtag NTVWild. Selected photos will be retweeted, shared on air and on our NTV Wild Facebook page. So now you know pretty much everything you need to know about these amazing elephants behind me and across the world. They are so special, but also so important. And the thought of poachers coming after them and killing populations for their tusks really does create a sense of anger and hurt. But there is hope thanks to women like Katito and Nora who dedicate their lives to researching and studying these elephants. In part two of this show next week, we'll be at the research camp to understand more about what happens there and how it benefits these incredible animals. That's it on NTV Wild Talk with me, Smriti Vidyarthi. Thanks for watching and remember, this episode has been made possible thanks to the Altakai Lodge that accommodated us. We'll see you again next Tuesday, 10 p.m. NTV Wild Talk, in partnership with the Kenya Wildlife Service and Wildlife Direct.